depending on what version of APA you have, here's what's in the box. The old APA hockey game came with two teams, a sample score sheet, purple round markers, and the classic yellow dice shaker with two dice, one bigger red, one bigger white, and a copy of the rules and chart boards. The older APA hockey rule book with uh, chart boards was quite a lot smaller than the modern day book, almost half size. Um, and inside the rule book, the uh, boards were all in complete color. The current day APA game comes a selection of four playoff teams from last year's playoffs. This is the 2017 set from the 2017 team. So there's Washington, Vegas, Tampa Bay, and Winnipeg. A sample score sheet, an introductory letter, a team sheet, of course the dice shaker and two dice. Uh, now these are both the same size, not like the older set. Uh, some purple markers and a good set of reference cards for many of the charts that you'll constantly be using. The game also comes with the rule and chart board book. Every player on the team has their own card, including the goalkeeper. Every card has the year and team the player played on above the player's name. Below the player's name, in black, is a list of the positions. Below those positions in red is the positions that the player is rated to play for. The ratings are the defensive ratings. The player can only play the positions in which he has a red defensive rating below it. The higher the number, the more proficient the player is. The forecheck rating is the player's ability to exert pressure in the offensive zone. The higher the number, the greater the chance his pressure will create scoring opportunities. Shot frequency rates the player's frequency of shots on goal. The number reflects the shots a player took per minute played. The shot range represents the player's potential to score on his shot on goal. The higher the number, the better the player's chances of scoring on a particular shot. The number after the minutes is the number of minutes you should play the player in APA hockey to replicate his real life statistics. The assist rating rates a player's ability to set up scoring opportunities for his teammates. The assist rating is also used to determine who gets credited with an assist after a goal is scored. The face-off rating reflects the player's ability to win face-offs. The higher, the better. The numbers behind the min, mage, and miss are players' tendencies towards retaliation penalties. The min is coincidental minors, the mage is major penalties, and miss is misconducts. The higher the number, the more prone the player is to have these penalties. The clearing rating rates a player's ability to clear rebounds and keep his opposing players from crowding his goaltender. The higher the number, the better. The more greater the number is behind the intimidation, the more the player is able to play physical. The higher the number, the more of an intimidator the player is. The numbers in green in the bottom of the card, C and I, are for the optional rules of in the corner and in the slot puck battles. The BLK is used for blocked shots. The A and S are assists and shot ratings used in the optional rule set for matchup play. The black and red numbers in the center of a player's card are the play result numbers. These are used with die rolls to find play results on the skater action boards. The same numbers on the goaltender cards are used to find the results on the goalie action boards. The setup for Apple Hockey is quite easy. Select the two teams you wish to play, get yourself a score sheet, list the players you want on the score sheet, bring out your quick reference cards, you'll use these quite often during the game, put your chits out on the four check line that you want. Uh, you'll start off most likely on two for both teams. That's a an average four checker. And you're going to use the four check and the goal action chart most um, beside the cards. So you'll want to turn to that in your rule book. You'd set up your board to play just like this. So the left hand side is home. The right is the visitors. So where Ovechkin is here, he's my left wing for Washington on the home side and opposing to him would be the right wing, which I'm gonna have Smith for the Vegas team. Carlson as my center. There's my left wing. My right defense 
my left defense and my goaltender. I know the, the position on the board shows it to be like this, but I find it very difficult to read that way when I'm playing, or playing solo at least. So I set it up like that. You make sure you have your four checking. What in most times you will start off on two. That's your average. And I explain what the four checking is a little bit later. You'd grab your dice, your cup, and you're ready to play. The next thing we do is resolve the face off. So we're going to use this uh, token to represent the hockey puck. We're going to take our face off chart. Uh, and we're going to note the face-off ratings of both centers. So uh, Backstrom here has a 3, Carlson is a 2. So Backstrom has an advantage of a 1 over, you take the one, subtract them from each other, so he has an advantage of a 1. So if we look at our quick reference chart here for our face-offs, and under the advantage plus 1, um, you can notice that there are numbers from 2 to 12, so we're going to roll two six-sided dice. And we're going to read them, we're going to add them together instead of reading them like normal numbers. So we have a 4 and a 6, that's a 10. So under the advantage, uh, advantage 1, we look under 10, the disadvantaged center gets the puck. So Carlson has won the draw and he now has the puck. So once the faceoff has been resolved, we now know that Carlson has the puck. We take the two six out of dice, give him a roll, and we're going to add them like this. So the, the tens column will be the red dice, the ones column will be the white dice, so we'll read this as a 41. Then we refer back to Carlson's card in the play result area here under 41, and we know we have a result of 24. So we take that result of 24 to the four checking chart under four check number two, because they're in a two four check, and we're going to look up the number of 24. So 24, the puck was intercepted by the opposing left-handed defense. And there is no nothing in the defensive adjustment chart area, so the puck was intercepted by the left defenseman, which is Orlov here, so now he has the puck. And if you look, behind that is a bracketed X. That bracketed X means you're going to mark off 30 seconds of game time. So it took that 30 seconds for the play to develop and Orlov to get control of the puck. So how do you progress play after that? You take Orlov, roll him, two dice. Again, we're going to read that as a 26, a 2, and a 6. Look up on his play result number under a 26. And again, that's a 24. Um, under the four check, that doesn't normally happen very often. And we know that's an intercepted by the left defenseman. 30 seconds more has gone in the game. We mark 30 seconds more. The opposing left defenseman, McNabb, now has the puck. Progress play by rolling for him. And he has a 32. His play result number on a 32 is a 30. So we reference that 30. It was icing. DZFO means defensive zone faceoff. So the puck got iced. Another 30 seconds are marked off of our timesheet. Puck went down, it was iced, it's brought back for a new face-off in the defensive zone. Carlstrom and back or sorry, Carlson and Backstrom are still our centers. So we know Backstrom has a plus one. And we give that a roll. And it comes up, and we read these now together as a nine. Refer to the plus one advantage. Under a nine, and the advantage center gets the puck. So now Backstrom has the puck. Now in the basic game. The face-off would go and you would roll the dice again and refer to the forecheck chart for that play. But as an optional rule, you can refer to uh, the offensive, or sorry, the uh, offensive and defensive zone face-off chart. And this is an, a, an optional rule. And instead of rolling on the forecheck chart, you would give a roll on this chart. Now, the, on this case, Backstrom, because we're in uh, uh, Vegas's end the well, Washington Capitals would be the offense and the defensive end would be Vegas so we refer to the offense because the offensive one Backstrom one refer to the 31 the 31 on his play result number is a 5 and the 5 here is a shot on goal from Backstrom right off that face off now there, there is no uh, adjustment for the defense uh, the opposing defensive adjustment 
for the offensive and defensive zone faceoffs. So you'd proceed right away with a shot on goal for Baxter. Now how a shot on goal works is you take the shot range of the player taking the shot. In this case, uh, Backstrom has a 23. So he scores, but not a lot. Not like a Wayne Gretzky. Um, so you would take both dice, and you're going to add them together, with the reds being the 10s, the whites being the 1s column. And you're trying to roll between 0 and 23 for it be a successful chance for a goal. So. Let's see what we get. He's got a 66, which is way out. So it was a shot shot on goal, um, but it was handled by the goaltender Flurry. So how do we resolve the shot on goal that was saved? You would check the normal save section and his roll the dice to get his play number. It's a 22. His 22 is a 2. So you refer to the normal save under the 2. Flurry saved the puck, and it was picked up by the right defenseman, and you'd mark off another 30 seconds of game time. Give the puck to the right defenseman. You'd roll his play number, check the four check chart, and proceed in that way. And that's how you proceed the game. Um, now, if, let's say, he rolled uh, 21. Well, 21 falls in that range of 0 to 23 for a successful opportunity to score. So you would roll it once again. So the puck is on net. It's going to be a goal. Let's see. You're going to roll it again and check Flurry's play result number on the potential goal, not the save. So let's see what Flurry would do with this if it was a successful shot. There's a 45, a 4 and a 5. Flurry's 45 play number is 6. But Flurry was a good enough goaltender. He has a 6. He still made the save and he smothered the puck for a defensive zone faceoff and there's another uh, 30 seconds of the game time gone. So you progress the game like that until all the times remaining in the period, three periods of 20 minutes or uh, 40, uh, 40 uh, checks of the 40 X's of your time. And yeah, it's just as simple as that. An initial play result number obtained from the offensive player's card with the puck can be raised or lowered by the strength of the opponent's defense on the ice. To find the opponent's defensive adjustment index rating, simply add all the defensive ratings of all the defensive team's players that are on the ice, cross-reference that result and the current forechecking level of the defensive team to find how many numbers to add or subtract from the play result number. The ODAI needs to be checked on play result numbers from 1 through 7 and through 10 through 20. The resulting ODAI play result number should remain in the range of 1 to 7 and 10 to 20. For example, a result of 6, a shot on goal, if the defensive block check is not successful, with an ODAI of plus 2 would give you an 8, a shot on goal, with a 4 check check. But 8 is out of the ODAI range. So instead of a play result numbering of 8, you would just use 7. As an example, we'll take New York Islanders Mike Bossy. He's playing against the Buffalo Sabres. Mike Bossy has rolled a 23, which results in a play result number of 4. He's on the ice against the Buffalo Sabres number 1 line, who have a combined defensive rating of 20. Using the opponent's defensive adjustment index chart, we cross-reference that rating and the 4-check level that Buffalo is currently in, to yield a plus two. Bossy's initial result of four, which is a clear shot on goal, is adjusted to a six, which is a shot on goal, giving Buffalo's defense an opportunity to block the shot. SOG means shot on goal. If a player gets this result, the player with the puck gets to take a shot on goal. You resolve a shot on goal by rolling the two die and combining them reading the red die first and the white die second. The die roll is then referenced against the player's shot range. A successful attempt at a potential goal happens when you roll a number equal to or less than the shot range number. With a successful attempt, you would then roll the two die, combine them, and find the play result number on the opponent goaltender's card. You would then take that result and look at the number up on the potential goal chart to find the result. Yeah. 
If the shot on goal is greater than the player's shot range, then you would roll the dice once again and obtain a play result number from the goaltender card. Cross-reference that on the normal save section of the goalie action chart. A 20 minute period in APA hockey is made up of 40 time sequences, each representing 30 seconds. Whenever a bracketed X appears with any chart result, you mark off a time sequence. The manual suggests changing your lines on the ice every four minutes. That's eight time sequences or eight X's. You can change your lines at any time there's a face off or a stoppage in play, or you can change on the fly. So how changing on the fly would work, in the basic game, you just have to uh, declare that you're changing on the fly, and then you roll on the change on the fly chart to see who gets the puck on the opposing team. So watch it's, it's hit 16 minute mark of the first period. Washington wants to change their, their on ice personnel, get some fresh legs out. So the Washington coach, declares he's going to change his line. So before rolling, you change your on ice personnel. Here, take these guys off the ice. Uh, you can change one, you can change uh, your defense up or your forwards up, or any combination of, of those. And I'm gonna put on Verena here as my left wing, sorry, Kunitsov, center, Wilson, right wing. Or pick my left defense. So you'd follow through now on the change on the fly chart, add those up for a nine, or sorry, a uh, 45. The 45 goes to the opposing left defenseman who now has the puck. They can choose now to change on the fly or keep going. Um, on the chart here, you, you'll notice that there's a dump and chase result in the second column. For the basic game, you would just see who gains possession. And if there's an icing, you can play the rule from the 2005 NHL season on up that if it's the puck is iced by the team trying to change, that team is now uh, denied the change and the personnel that were on the ice at the icing has to come back on the ice and then you'll have to try changing them up again. As an optional rule, in the optional rules, there's a dump and chase option. If you get a penalty result, the player whose card it was derived from is assessed a penalty. A two minute penalty, and the player goes to the box for two minutes. When you get a coin penalty two result, the player from whose card the result was derived from is sent to the penalty box for two minutes. In addition, an opposing player may be sent to the penalty box for two minutes as a coincidental minor penalty. To resolve the coincidental minor penalty, Look at the opponent's players on the ice to find which has the highest min rating. Roll the dice for this player and combine them. If the dice roll is equal to or less than the player's min rating, he is assessed a two minute penalty. If not, find the second highest min rating and roll the dice for him. You would continue this way through the entire opposing team until a penalty has been assessed or in the case of not rolling any equal or less than the player's min ratings, no penalty is assessed. Anytime a coincidental minor penalty occurs, it does not result in a power play. On a result of POS.BM, meaning for a possible bench minor penalty, it may be possible that the team has received a bench minor, such as delay of game, illegal substitution, face-off violation, too many players on the ice, etc. To resolve a possible bench minor penalty, each team has been rated on their team sheets for its propensity to receive a bench minor. The rating is from 0 to 26 and can be found next to the respective team name on the roster sheet. Roll both dice, and if the result is less than or equal to the bench minor rating of the opposing team, then a bench minor two minute penalty has been called. If not, roll again and check versus the bench minor rating of the team whose player derived the result. On a fight five min, the player whose card the result was derived from may be sent to the penalty box for five minutes for fighting, if an opponent can be found for him to fight. To find an opponent, Look at the mage rating for the opposing players on the ice at the time and find the highest rated one. Roll the dice for this player and combine them. If the dice roll is equal to or less than the player's mage rating, he gets a five minute penalty also. If not, find the second highest mage rating and roll the dice again. 
continue in this way until a player is assessed a five minute major for fighting or until you have run out of players on the ice. If no opposing player is assessed, there is no fighting major and the player receives a two minute minor. Once you have a penalty result, you take the player who is, has the penalty, you can remove him from the game board or flip him upside down. Um, and you're gonna, in this case, it's a, a defenseman. You can drop back a forward and there are uh, adjustments you can use if you have a forward on the point. But I'm gonna replace him with another defenseman, Theodore. So now I've got a four on five. The puck was in the corner, or in this end, so we're at a face off in this end. And now the team with the penalty is going to use a roll on the special teams chart under shorthanded. And the Washington Capitals here who've got a man advantage would use the man advantage chart. And this chart supersedes all charts, including the offensive and defensive zone face-off chart and the forecheck chart. So the results here are from face-off straight up to shot on goal. Um, there is also a two-man advantage section and a two-man shorthanded. And there are adjustments, and this chart is really nice. It shows if you're on a two-man shorthanded, your shot result is adjusted by a minus 10. So uh, a Carlson here, instead of his shot range having a 34, would be a 24. Conversely, on this side, the team that has an advantage, just a one-man advantage, they increase their rating, their shot rating, by two. So Knutsev, uh 24 would be a 26. Verano would be a 20 two instead of a 21 but if they are on a two-man advantage you add or you adjust their shot rating by 10 so instead of being a 24 it would be now a 34 when you're using the special teams chart the opponent's defensive adjustment index or the ODAI is not applicable so you just use this chart solely during play in a penalty if a play result shows up, uh, say on, in this case I have on the board, if it shows up that uh, the puck would have gone to Vegas's right wing, that position is now vacant because I've, they're on five on four. There is no right wing. Um, for a result like that, you would once again roll for it and find a new play result uh, until you get something that would go to somebody else. Shot ranges on a power play can also be altered by teams power play and penalty killing ratings. So you refer to the uh, team sheet that's included with every Apple hockey set. You refer to uh, the power play and penalty killing rating for each team. So Washington is on the power play. So their power play rating is a plus one. Vegas, who is on the penalty killing side, their rating for penalty killing is zero. So you would add these two together. So a plus one and a zero comes up with plus one on the power play side for Washington. So you would not only get a plus two power play adjustment, you would get a plus three because you would add that extra team rating. So Kuznetsov's rating would be from uh, adjusted from a 24 to a 27. If Washington was playing Winnipeg and Winnipeg had the penalty, Washington has the man advantage, their power play is a plus one Winnipeg's penalty kill is a minus one. They're good on the penalty kill. So a plus one plus a minus one is a zero they negate. That means there would be no extra added bonus for the power play team. You can pull your goaltender uh, for an extra skater at any time you want. Um, in this game I've got set up now, the Vegas Knights are one goal behind in, late in the third period, one minute left to go in the third period. They have the puck and they're going to put Flurry on the bench and bring in an extra skater, try to put that extra pressure on to the Washington Capitals. Now a few things have to happen when you do that. First thing is the opposing team that has the uh, extra skater drops down to four checking one. So you'll be using the four check uh, one chart for all of their results. The team with the extra skater can now use the goalie pulled chart. And the goalie pulled chart has two columns, one for an extra skater, just a normal six on five, uh, or sorry, six skaters versus five skaters. Uh, the other is a man in disadvantage and there's no decrease in shot uh, result. So that would just be like 
if they had a penalty and they added an extra skater while they pulled their goaltender, so it would be five skaters on five skaters. Now the advantages of pulling your goaltender, of course you get extra pressure on the opposing team. The advantages are you're going to use the goalie pull chart which gives you a lot more shots on goals and a lot more pass uh, and, and your interceptions are a little less. And you force your opponent into a four checking one situation where they don't have a lot of shots on goal as opposed to uh, a four check two or a four check three. The advantages for the team with five skaters as opposed to the six and facing an empty net is that their shot range increases by 20. So an Ovechkin here with a shot range of 23 where he would only get a shot on goal between zero and 23 when he rolls would now be increased to 43. So if he rolls uh, anything greater than 43, you would say he'd miss the net and it would cause an icing and then the puck would come down into the Washington end. Um, but if he's rolled uh, from zero to 43 or two to 43, uh, then it's an automatic goal because there is no goaltender to make the save. When you have a face-off, uh, now you would still use, with a, a, a man advantage, or a goaltender pulled, you would still use, um, well in, in this case here you would use in the non-optional rules and the basic rules, you would still use the goalie pull chart uh, extra skater or four check one for the team without the, the full skater. Or if you were playing the uh, optional rule, you, could still, you would still use the offensive and defensive zone uh, face-off chart and on a roll of three or 12, the puck, uh, you would disregard what it would say in the face-off chart, and the puck would go to the extra skater, and they would refer to either the offensive defensive zone or the goalie pull chart extra skater to resolve the next action. So let's play this last minute out. So Fleury is now sitting on the bench. We have an empty net in the Vegas end. Hula is now on the ice as our extra skater. One minute left to go in the third period. They're down by one goal. Schmidt has the puck. So, give a roll. Got a, four, a 15. We refer to his card. 15 is a 7. We're going to refer to the goalie pulled extra skater chart for a 7. And he gets a shot on goal. So let's Resolve that shot on goal. His shot range is a one uh, is a one to a thirteen or two to a thirteen. Now there is no, there isn't any adjustment for uh, Schmidt. Uh, he doesn't make a successful shot on goal. It's a forty-six, which is out of his range. So let's see how uh, Holtby responds with a fifty-two. A fifty-two is a twenty-seven. So we would still use the. Uh, goaltender action chart on a normal save uh, for a 52 again sorry is a 27 27 is a save shot on goal for the opposing third highest score frequent a shot frequency and we can check the clearing uh, if not if checked if it's cleared if not it's a defensive zone face off and we've got 30 seconds marked shot but let's start here it's a shot on goal for the third highest shot frequency on the ice. So Carlson is a 34, or sorry, uh, shot frequency 31. So he's an 18, he's a 21, he's a 31. So our third highest here would be Carlson with a shot frequency of 18. Now we're gonna check if the puck is cleared. So to resolve that, we're gonna check the clearing rating of the two defensemen that are on Washington's side here. And their clearing rating for Orlov is a four and Carlson's a Three, so together that's a seven. So we're gonna roll the two dice. And if it's below a seven, they've successfully cleared the puck, and they have. So that's a three. So Carlson does not get the rebound shot. So you move to the next, You after the check cleared, the puck is uh, saved and, and smothered by Holtby, and we mark off 30 seconds. So now we're gonna to move to a face-off. So the face-off rating still stands. Carlson's face-off rating is a two. Backstrom is a three, so Backstrom has a one point advantage. That's a five on the face trough chart after a plus one advantage. It's the disadvantage right wing gets the puck. So Smith has the puck. 30 seconds left to go in the game. Time is clicking away. So now we refer to the goalie pulled chart 
we're going to roll on his play result number 35 35 is a three it's a wonderful shot on goal once again so a lot of pressure in the washington end his shot range is a 23 and it's a 22 so it's a successful shot on goal. They may tie this up in the last 30 seconds of the game. Let's see how Holpe is going to respond. He's got a 13, a 13 on his card is a six. And once you get started to get used to the chart result numbers that you know anything starting from one to an 18 is going to be a save. So that six is a save. Smothered for another defensive zone faceoff. Another 30 seconds goes off in the game. That means time has run out. The game is over, so even adding the extra goaltender was not successful. Washington held them off. The game finishes 3-2 to two for Washington. I've just finished a game in regulation and a 10-minute overtime period between the 1983-84 Edmonton Oilers, Stanley Cup winning Edmonton Oilers, and the 1991-92 Pittsburgh Penguins. So finishing a 3-3 tie, even though back in the 80s and 90s they didn't have a shootout to resolve the game. I'm going to show you how you can resolve an overtime uh, game in shootout. To resolve a shootout shot, you're going to select your uh, players with the highest shot range you can find. And what you're going to do with that shot range is you're going to add 10 numbers to it until a maximum of 43. So Wayne Gretzky here's his shot range is a 41, so you can only raise that to a 43. Now you'd say um, Mario Lemieux here is a 31. So Mario Lemieux's number or shot noon shot number would be 41. Um, now you would say uh, in my selection here, why wouldn't I pick Yarmie Yager in the 91, 92? He had a lot of goals, um, but his shot range is only 26. So that gives him a maximum of a 36 for the shootout. So you're gonna try to choose players with a, a range that you can max out with the, the best shot range. Okay, so now we're ready. So first up, um, the visiting team here, Mario Lemieux, who's got a shot range of 31, adjusted for the shootout, uh, will be a 41. So you must roll uh, from zero to 41 for his shot to be successful on Grant Fear, who's the goaltender for the Edmonton Oilers. So let's give that a roll. It's a 54, Mary Lemieux's shot was not successful, so it's still 3-3 tie. Next, we're gonna go to Wayne Gretzky, who's at 41. We're gonna max him out at 43. His shot is on Tom Barrasso. 64 and Wayne Gretzky the great one doesn't get a goal my goodness goaltenders have been spectacular in this game uh, Phil Bork uh, with a 32 we max or we raise it to a 42 see if we can roll within his range and we do we roll within his range it's a 21 so it might be a successful goal he's deking on Grant Fuhr now how you resolve the the see if it's a goal or if Grant Fuhr gets a save you're going to roll the dice again combine them refer to the black number uh, that you've rolled and if any one, number one, comes up, the goaltender has saved the uh, the deke or the uh, the shootout attempt. Um, any number beside that, you're not going to refer to any chart. Any number beside that, and it will be a goal. So, Ray Bo or, sorry, not Ray Bork, Phil Bork. Ray Bork is awesome. Phil Bork uh, on the 91-92 Pittsburgh Penguins has rolled a 43. We're going to refer to Grant Fuhrer's card under 43. It is not a one, it's a 29. So, Phil Bork has scored. We've broken our tie. It's one nothing. Yari Curry, he's got a 41, so we're gonna max him out at 43. And he misses, oh my. So it's one nothing. Uh, Joe Mullen, who's got a 31, we're gonna uh, raise him to a 41 for the shootout. He can put this game away. And the 91-92 Pittsburgh Penguins, oh my goodness, it's under his shot range. It's in his shot range from one to 41, it's a 14. So now we're gonna check Grant Fuhr's card again. See if he's handled this deke. Grant Fuhr, amazing goaltender. It's a 35, we refer to 35 on the card and it's a four, nope. Mullen puts it behind Fuhr to end the game. No matter what Glenn Anderson does, they've got two. So the game ends in a five uh, or three, or an overtime uh, shootout win for the Pittsburgh Penguins. So that's how you'd resolve not only a, a shootout if you should choose to have a shootout, but a penalty shot as well. When the result of rare shows up on a chart, you follow through with the action preceding the rare first, then roll the dice again to find the result on the rare play charts. That's it for the basic Apple hockey game. I hope this was helpful. 
In my next video, I'll go over the optional rules that really add depth to this game. I hope this was helpful. Good day, eh?